Hello and welcome to another whiteboard training video. I'm going to tell you today about the fastest growing position for PhDs like you. Now, there's a couple of positions that are growing really fast in, uh, in terms of science-based positions, such as MSLs and the career I'm about to talk to you about. But right now, this one is projected to be the most in demand in the future. And not, it's not being projected by just anyone, but by McKinsey and Company and many of the lead consulting firms. What's the position? A data scientist position. Now, this is a fairly new position. In fact, it was only mentioned first in 2008. That's when the term data scientist was coined. Why is this important? Because it means there's a lot of misconceptions about what a data scientist is. As a PhD, if you've dealt with data, you could consider yourself a data scientist, even if you're an engineer. But a lot of people think that a data scientist in industry means you have to be a computer programmer, right? You have to have a PhD background in statistics. That can help you for certain types of data scientist positions, but it's not required, okay? So things are much more fluid now. There are uh, data scientist positions where biologists are going into those positions, where social scientists are going in those positions. If you have the ability to analyze data, you are a candidate for data scientist positions. It just depends on which specific position for which specific company in which specific industry, right? So if you're gonna be a data scientist for a Pfizer, obviously your background can be almost anything, okay? As long as you've dealt with data and you know how to analyze data, you know how to mine data and create actionable insights, results from that data. Of course, if you're looking at a data scientist position from Intel, right, or from a, a computer programming company, it's probably gonna require you to know some programming languages. Either way, as a PhD, guess what? You can learn programming languages very easy. It's not as complex as it used to be. Okay, so the second point here, machine learning, data mining, predictive analytics, understanding these phrases, what they mean, can help you during your job search. If you're looking for a data scientist position, start to understand the nomenclature. Start looking at the job postings. And guess what? Realize that you have these skills already. Data mining, this isn't anything special. Looking at data all day, looking for trends, this is what you've likely done for years at this point. You already have this skill set. Even machine learning, okay? This is just a machine learning to teach itself how to find data better. For example, AI, all of these things, these tools, these software programs you're using on a day-to-day -day basis likely already have helped you develop these skill sets, okay? You can develop skills at different levels, but realize that you likely have these skills or certainly you can learn them as a PhD. Same with predictive analytics, okay? This is something that you're doing right now for sure as a PhD. Number three, statistical programming languages, right? This can help you get into certain types of data scientist positions. Learning Python, for example. Again, this is very simple to do. As a PhD, you have a doctor of philosophy, which means knowledge and the ability to ascertain knowledge. You're a doctor of learning you can learn simple programming languages. And a lot of these languages are getting easier or there's software programs that allow you to do things you couldn't do in the past. As a PhD, you can learn these things. It's not just this black box that only advanced computer programmers can learn anymore, okay? Also database query, uh, query languages such as SQL. This is something you've likely, if you have a background in STEM, you've likely already had to do a little bit with SQL. If you've done any sort of high throughput screenings, um, you've likely dealt with these kind of programming languages. You can learn more about them. You can teach them yourself. You can certainly teach yourself enough of this for a company to hire you. A lot of companies are hiring PhDs right now where they will train you in learning Python or learning SQL if you don't have the level of expertise that you need. And again, to reiterate, there's a lot of data scientist positions that don't require any sort of computer programming whatsoever. They just require you to be able to do what you already know how to do very, very well. Look at large, uh, large swaths of data, drill down, find trends, find the data that matters, and very importantly, create actionable insights and conclusions that lead to things that'll help a business improve in terms of revenue or profits or distribution or manufacturing or find new products, product development, etc. That takes us to number four. A big part of becoming a data scientist and where most PhDs fail when they go down their job search and they start interviewing for these positions and they don't get job offers is they forget about the transferable skills part of becoming a data scientist. They think, oh, do I know enough of a programming language? Or, you know, do I qualify as a data scientist? You do, and what you should be concerned about is whether or not you can communicate your transferable skills. Which transferable skills are important for data scientists? 
you have to be able to find actionable results in the data. So the data that you're looking through as you're mining through the data, you have to find the trends, the insights, the data that matters, and then produce an actionable result or an actionable insight, right, that will lead to a plan to obtain those results. And this can happen right on the R&D side, the innovation side, where you're looking at data and you're looking to see, you know, what you could be testing or what new products might work, right? Uh, we have a lot of PhDs who work for skincare companies like L'Oreal or Estee Lauder. And so they're looking at different formulations and they have to dig through a lot of different data. They gotta look through screening data to find these compounds that might make a better product. Okay, but it can also be on the commercialization side. So once a product is in the market, you might be looking at consumer data, right? You might be looking at user experience data. Either way, it goes beyond just looking at the data and finding uh, the data that matters, you have to be able to communicate it to key stakeholders who usually don't have a PhD or don't have a scientific background. Can you communicate these actionable insights to people who don't have a scientific background, who don't understand anything about the data whatsoever? Can you communicate to them in a way that helps them make decisions, right? People, the key stakeholders in those executive positions, the C-suite positions. Something, again, a lot of people don't think about, and this is why there's such a shortage of data scientists right now, not because there's not enough PhDs who understand how to look at data, but because there's not enough PhDs who can communicate their findings well, can turn their findings into actionable results for a company. So I want you to focus on that. Number five, deep analytics training. At the end of the day, if you're thinking about whether or not you can become a data scientist, just ask yourself, do you have any experience with data analytics? Do you have any experience with data mining, right? deep analytics training, this is where the shortage is right here. People doing data analysis, people having the ability to do data analysis. According to McKinsey and company, there's a shortage of anywhere between 140,000 and 190,000 people for data scientist roles right now. It's a very hot position. It's one of the fastest growing positions available. It's something you are perfect for as a PhD, even if you don't have a statistics background or computer programming background. Also, especially in terms of manager positions, if you want to get into a science position, uh, a senior position, this is a great position for you to consider. A data scientist position because there's going to be a shortage, there is a shortage of 1.5 million people with deep analytics training in management positions. Most managers, they don't understand big data. Most managers today, they don't have data analysis training. You can get into a management position because you have this skill set. You just have to be able to do this too. You have to be able to communicate your findings, draw conclusions, translate that knowledge, that scientific knowledge, into an actionable result. Now, when it comes down to what it's like to work as a data scientist day to day, first of all, it's one of the highest paid positions, okay? Very valuable. Anytime you have a shortage, it's supply and demand. There's a low supply, so and the demand is high, which means you're worth more very high salary. You're not going to do a lot of traveling, not traditionally. It's not really a filled position. It's more of an in-house position. You're going to be digging through a lot of data. You're going to be collecting data from the people in the field, the sales people that are in the field, uh, maybe key stakeholders that go in the field like uh, uh, liaisons or application scientists. You'll be collecting that data, analyzing it. Again, it can be uh, in innovation related data, commercial related data, uh, it's a, obviously a very numbers heavy position. It, it can be fairly writing heavy too. You'll have to write a lot of reports and again, you'll have to take the data, communicate it simply, and turn uh, the data, the knowledge into actionable results. Hopefully this helps you understand what a data scientist position is and, it, and whether or not it's right for you. If you wanna read more about this position, you can download the free ebook that's linked at the top of this video. This, is, th this includes the top 20 positions for PhDs. If you wanna learn more about getting into your first or next industry position, you can also go to phdsgethired.com, put your name and email there, and we'll send you all of our free materials and all of our free ebooks. As always, remember your value as a PhD and start thinking and acting like a successful industry professional.